Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Adam Adis. Hello, hello. How we doing, ladies? Welcome. I'd like to apologize. You're a black man, correct? Half and half? Okay, well, I'm going to half apologize to you. All right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys my favorite knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Nigga. Oh, oh. <laughs> Fuck. I got to catch that clip on camera, man. I want to be on Fox and CNN all at the same time. Controversial comedian. Brave comedian. I want to be that guy, you know? I don't know. White guys like it when you call them the N-word. They smile. <laughs> they don't get mad. I grew up in Maryland, so I used to hear the N-word a lot growing up. And it's cool to come to Chicago because you don't hear the N-word, especially from white guys in the city because they're so woke. White guys in the city don't say the N-word, they say something worse, they say, buddy, fuck that shit. No. Call me a nigga and let's be friends, you know what I mean? I'm just kidding, don't call me a nigga after the show, okay? I don't want to fight you all. I like, I like Buddy. Buddy is fun. You know what's funny about Buddy? Buddy is the insulting one. The complimentary one is Bud. <laughs> you can only say Bud to each other if you have over a hundred grand in assets. It's a very different game, you know? Yeah. I don't know, I'm trying to be a better black guy myself. I'm trying to stop saying the N-word and I'm trying to help my white friends stop getting in trouble. So I'm like, all right, what word can I use or present to society to replace the N-word? The word that I came up with is colleague. I think that's the safest <laughs> bet there is. I like that joke a lot because I want you guys to go to work tomorrow, open your email, and it's like, hey, you have a meeting with our East Coast team colleague, Emily. And you're like, oh, Emily from the holiday party. That's one wild colleague, bro. She's, she's crazy, man. January 6th, those colleagues were going dumb, bro. That was a, not a good day for the colleagues, man. I like talking about grace. I'm a black guy named Adam, which means I have some notes for the Bible. That black guy likes that one. Yeah, I know. It's always a black guy in the crowd, yeah. I don't know, that story is goofy as fuck to me. It makes no sense. It's pretty clear to me that Adam was a black man and Eve was a toxic white lady who ruined his life. It's all about the context clues. You gotta read between the lines. The story is about ribs and homicide. I mean, damn. It's a bit on the nose, if you ask me. Might as well be about an interracial couple in St. Louis. Instead of Cain and Abel, it's Cain with the K and disabled. Different family, different problems. I'm a black guy named Adam, which means I have beef with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Fuck that colleague. The man's got all the money in the world and he has to accept Black Adam. What a ridiculous superhero. I hope you guys didn't watch it. It was terrible. Terrible. There's this dude in Africa who falls asleep and they wake him up and he's pissed because they gentrified Africa. It's this whole thing. I just don't get why they called him Black Adam. They could have called him anything else. African Adam. Or Angry Adam. And they're like, nah, we gotta make sure they know he's a colleague. They gotta be, they gotta be on their toes. And I really hate this black superhero because with white superheroes, they have this whole moral dilemma where they cannot and will not murder. Not colleague Adam, that guy likes to kill. <laughs> the whole movie is convincing this black guy to kill for good, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm a black guy named Adam, which means I have white privilege and I get it, I understand. <laughs> I know why you guys like this. You guys are looking at me like, that colleague is crazy. What's he talking about? <laughs> white privilege. I know you guys don't believe me, but I have three brothers. And their names are Minelik, Tinsai, and Fosica. And my name's Adam, so whoa. That was a close one. I was born with an 850 credit score. This shit is fire, bro. I, I like this shit a lot. The weirdest part about that is I'm the middle child, so I don't know what happened. I think my mom had a crush on Adam Sandler in the 90s, and you know, I'll rip the benefits. I'm here for it. Being a black guy with the name Adam always makes my first job interview very funny. 
Because I crushed the phone interview. You guys hear this voice right here. I got that down. <laughs> and they're like, bring in Adam Adis. And I'm like, what up, colleagues? And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, we didn't, um, can you pee in this cup? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, today I can, but this isn't like an everyday thing, right? This pee is pretty expensive, okay? I don't have that many friends to buy this shit from. I'm an Ethiopian. I like being Ethiopian. When my brothers and I were younger, my parents were like, do you guys want to go to Disney World or Ethiopia? And we were like, Ethiopia! And then we got there, we were like, fuck, what? Oh, no. What's that smell? Oh, everything. Okay, yeah, sure. Nah, I don't want to shit on being Ethiopian. Ethiopia is cool, man. Ethiopia, I don't know if you guys know this, Ethiopia is the only country in Africa to never be colonized. So to your racist grandfather, suck it. You know, we're kind of just out here doing our thing. That's cool. I did 23andMe to confirm that stat. My results came back 100% Ethiopian. DNA so pure, Angelina Jolie slid in my DMs. I was like, oh. She's like, what you doing? I'm like, doggy style, obviously. Come on now. You call my ass the womb raider. I'm in there, bro. Let's give Woody Allen a run for his money. Let's go, yeah. Adopt my ass. Now, that's crazy, man. She just went to Ethiopia and adopted these kids. And she's only rich from entertainment. I'm in entertainment. So now I gotta get real rich and adopt like six trailer park white kids from Gary and Gary. Yeah, me and my little colleagues are here to run Congress, okay? They're my sleeper cells, you know? But the black dad policies will change, I promise. Now I feel bad. It's crazy, because she just adopted those kids. I'm in America, like, yo, pick me, what the fuck? I want Brad Pitt to be my dad. I feel bad for that family, though. I feel bad for those kids. Because now these Ethiopian children are children of divorce. It's sad. Divorce is not a thing in Ethiopian culture. So much so, there was a big divorce wave that hit my hometown when we were in middle school. My brothers and I were like, hey, if mom and dad got a divorce, would you want to live with mom or dad? My dad's like, hey, hey, hey. I met her before we made you, so we would get rid of you before we got rid of each other. <laughs> People hear that, they're like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. I hear that, it sounds like if my mom was drowning us, my dad would help bury us. And, uh, <laughs> I guess that's love, sure, yeah, okay. Now, marriage is very important in Ethiopia. I've been to Ethiopia three times, and the last time I was there was in January, for my cousin's big wedding. 700 people wedding, five days. By day three, I'm dancing. I'm like, can I just sit down, please? I just want some water, no more whiskey, please. Ethiopia's cool, though. My cousin's husband got us some weed. Terrible weed, though. I mean, like 2008 weed. It was... Not good. And he's like, hey man, I can get you cocaine. And I was like, well, what about fentanyl? And he's like, what's fentanyl? And I was like, oh, you have 2008 cocaine. Okay, let's go, this is a wedding, let's party. I got three more days of dancing left. I need all the help I can get. I like Ethiopia. Ethiopia gets a bad rap though, just like Chicago. Ethiopia gets a bad rap. All you hear is the bad stuff. We're the punchline for poverty, literally. It's infuriating. I don't care how woke Entertainment gets, they're taking away episodes of the Looney Tunes and all these shows for how to pick certain cultures, but that episode of South Park with Starvin' Marvin is still up. <laughs> Guys, I've been to Ethiopia three times, I did not meet one colleague named Marvin, okay? <laughs> Starvin', no doubt, no Marvins. But again, it's infuriating, because you only hear the bad things. Poverty, AIDS, you know, that nasty stuff. You never hear the good stuff. Never colonized, excellent food, beautiful women. I have five cousins who went to Harvard. And it's crazy that we could accomplish all of that and your parents didn't give 50 cents a day. Isn't that kind of wild? <laughs> Can you imagine where we'd be right now? <laughs> all right, enough about the Africans. Let's make fun of you white people. Boo! <laughs> I like you whites, you guys are all right. Now, I studied white people in college, so moving to the Midwest is kind of like grad school, and I'm 
I'm really learning a lot. Like, I used to think that the key to a white girl's heart was like a trust fund or a boat. Come here, turns out, it's just a little cup of ranch. Just a little cup. A little cup of ranch. I mean, if you have ranch on a boat, you're set. I don't got a boat, I just got some ranch. And uh, the shit works, man. I might go after this, put a little dab in my wrist. A little dab in my neck. And then Emily is like, oh, your aura, your energy. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It's that Hidden Valley, girl. I got buckets of this shit up back home. Let's get naked. Let's do that. I like, it. I like uh, white guys. I started, I started studying white guys at a very young age. I feel like you can learn a lot about a culture through entertainment. That's how a lot of foreigners learn English. But there is one show that I wish every foreigner would watch before they come here to really teach you about white guys in America. And that show is Jackass. Yeah. My grandmother couldn't speak English and she loved that show. Something about watching white guys kick themselves in the dick made her smile a lot. And I get it, I'm creative. I wanna be in entertainment, so let's call my show Blackass. Okay, relax, all right? My name's Adam, and I'm driving with a suspended license while smoking a blunt through Indiana. Oh, shit! That colleague is crazy, bro! It's just one sketch and a legal nightmare for MTV. Yeah. I took my white guy studies to the next level during COVID. I started golfing. Why is that funny? I know why it's funny. I know why it's funny. You know why they don't want black guys to play golf? It's because we're good at it. And uh, they're gonna have to rename the masters. It'll be a whole thing. I'll let that one settle for you guys, yeah. Now golf is fire, bro. Golf is great. They don't tell you about golf, but you can bring snacks. The snacks are beer and weed, but those are my kind of snacks, okay? If we're playing basketball and you hand me a blunt, I'm gonna sit down and watch you play basketball. <laughs> but if we're golfing and you hand me a blunt and you're like, hey, we have hot dogs at the next hole, I'm like, yo, this is a great day for me. <laughs> Fuck our girlfriends, let's play again, bro. <laughs> now, golf is great, man. The hardest part about golf is that there's a big learning curve. It's very expensive. You lose a lot of balls. I played so much golf during COVID, I realized I actually treat women like golf balls. <laughs> I want to bang them on the weekends, but I've got terrible stroke game. I always lose the nice expensive ones, but I know I can find a dirty one in the woods. And uh, well, shout out to Wisconsin, baby. They get down, yeah. I like living in Chicago. Chicago's a cool city, man. Chicago's the best city to be fake rich in. Shit's awesome, man. I know y'all got credit card debt. It's all good, we feel you, it's good. Now, you cannot be fake rich in L.A. and New York the same way you can in Chicago. L.A., New York, you can make six figures a year. Fuck your life up tomorrow. Chicago, you make a nice little 55. Ooh, you can have some fun. You know how I know that? I make 25, and I'm doing all right. Yeah, this shit is... We living out here, bro. Now, I actually know that because I drink with CPS teachers, and uh, damn, can they ball on a budget. It's impressive, bro. Just eight balls and buckets to be here. It's crazy. You know? uh, Chicago is cool. I like living in Chicago. I like taking it all in because I feel like I see things differently than you guys who were born and raised here. Like everyone talks about the same things in Chicago, socioeconomic issues, race issues. No one ever talks about the real issue that I notice amongst all sides. It's the litter issue. I mean, the litter on the north side, it's like a Starbucks cup, PBR can. <laughs> The little on the south side is like a refrigerator. I'm like, how? That didn't fall after Corolla, okay? What, what are we talking about here? And then the little on the west side is just a car on fire. And you're like, okay, let's go back to Naperville. This is a bad idea. Is Harold's chicken really worth it? I don't know. No, Chicago is cool. I've lived here almost five years now. I moved in with my cousin, her husband, his brother, his wife, and their baby. And I'm the colleague in the basement. It's like Chicago Full House, and I'm Black Uncle Joey. Yeah, this shit is weird. <laughs> My cousin's husband is cool. He's the first white guy in our family. But he's also a cop, so, ugh. <laughs> you 
<laughs> nah, he's a cool cop. He's a cool cop. He always leaves his body camera on. <laughs> Except for when he's fucking my cousin. Then he turns it off just for me. I know, I, I feel bad for cops. That's a bad job. That's the only job that society really forces or wants that body camera for. I feel like a lot of jobs should have body cameras. Line cooks. <laughs> Pharmacist, so you know who the cool ones are, you know? <laughs> My one friend is like, hey man, you're missing the obvious one. There's one obvious job that really needs a body camera. You guys are probably thinking it, Catholic priests. <laughs> and I'm like, no, they don't need a body camera. God, it's their body camera. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to be in the courtroom when they play back the tape. It's going to be dark. It's just a bad job. Being a cop is a bad job. I've had so many bad jobs. My first job was at McDonald's. Anybody else ever worked at McDonald's? I'm sorry. <laughs> the American dream is tainted. <laughs> if I could burn down every McDonald's just to free the employees, I would. First job, 15 years old, my first day there. I meet this guy. He's like, hey man, are you a virgin? And I'm like, yeah. He said, all right, well, when you get the chance to have sex with a girl, stick your thumb up her ass. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, don't touch the fries. Um, <laughs> don't touch anything, bro. Go home. <laughs> Goofy ass jobs. I don't know. I'm what you call a corporate cuck. I've worked for so many big corporations. A corporate cuck, if you don't, if you don't know what a cuckold is, let me teach you. <laughs> okay. Some people like it when other bigger, better people fuck the woman they love. In my case, the bigger and better person is my employer. The woman I love are my dreams. And, uh, yeah. Capitalism, woo! Yeah. Fucking dumb, man. I worked for five years for a big, big corporation. I don't want to get sued, so let's just call it Renterprise, okay? Yeah. Terrible company, don't let your cousins or nephews work there. It's bad. <laughs> but I worked there long enough, I ended up getting a promotion. And I ended up needing to take a drug test that I didn't know about. So I asked my friend, nice lady friend of mine, for some pee. Get the pee, everything's good. My coworker's like, hey, does your friend take birth control? And I'm like, damn, what am I gonna do? I'm like, I got it, I'll tell them I'm trans. I think that's gonna be the safest bet. <laughs> for a very conflicting HR conversation. <laughs> no, I just quit my, I quit that day job now. I, uh, I'm a poor guy now, poor guy in Chicago. Dating is hard when you're poor. You all of a sudden become body positive. <laughs> like, my body is positive, it wants to sleep in your AC. You know, I don't care where I go. I just want floor to ceiling windows, baby. Let's get it. Now you gotta be body positive in Chicago because women out here are built different. They're built thick. Beer cheese thick, that shit is righteous, bro. I like that. Fuck it, man, who cares? I don't care, tall, small, fat, who gives a fuck, man? I treat tall women the same way corporations treat the Amazon forest. I'm gonna knock them down. And uh, I don't give a fuck, who tries to stop me? Any questions? <laughs> no, Chicago's cool. Chicago's a very gay city, and I like it a lot. I like it. Get your rocks off, do whatever you like. I'm very pro-sex, whatever you're sexually into. But it does bother me that people feel the need to share certain things with their family. Like, why do you have to explain to your grandfather you're poly? You're a barista with three roommates. You're fucking, it's okay. You don't need to put labels on this shit. We know what's going on. Like, my mom knows I like women, but she doesn't know like to choke them. You know, I kind of just resist <laughs> sharing that information. I want to go home for Christmas, you know? <laughs> Make some noise if you didn't go to college. We're all fucked. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> we all made a bad decision. Again, I'm a child of immigrants, so I had to go to college. And I only had three options out of school, doctor, lawyer, engineer. I chose clown, and my parents are stoked. <laughs> yeah. No, they're very supportive. They're very supportive. I actually went to school for a pharmaceutical program, and I studied pharmaceuticals, but it was a lot of independent research, you know? 
I did so much acid in college, they just handed me a philosophy minor. They're like, there you go. You know everything now. I'm like, bro, I can't read. What's going on? No, I went into that program because my mom is also a pharmacist. And my Southside friends don't like it when I say that my mom is a drug dealer. They don't really like that. They don't like when I say that. I don't know, some guys work for cartels. Some people work for Pfizer. Same, same, you know? <laughs> and that joke was funnier three years ago. Now it's kind of uh, in ill taste. You know, I like, uh, I like being where I'm at. I like being in Chicago. I like figuring things out. Dating is hard, obviously. I don't know, people, like I said, are too woke. I dated this uh, plant girl. A Wicker Park plant girl. A poly Wicker Park plant girl. <laughs> it's a lot, man. And it's not even like she had a bunch of other boyfriends. She just cared about her 35 plants more than me. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'm a transplant. I identify as a nigga plant. And uh, I'm gonna need you to water and weed me twice a day. <laughs> now I wanna be rich, so I just turned 28. I just turned 28. And I have a lot of friends getting really rich really fast. And like I said, Chicago's a great city to be fake rich in. You know, get an eight ball, get a table service, Uber Black, it's all fake rich shit. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do real rich shit. I want to file for bankruptcy. I want to really play this game, you know? I want to play the game. I do like living in Chicago a lot. It's cool, I was just back in DC doing shows. And you know why I like Chicago? Chicago's a party city. I don't feel tension the same way I do in DC. In DC, there was a guy sprinting down the street in the middle of the day with a suit on. So I'm like, I don't know if nuclear wars happened, if it's hooker just died, I don't know what happened. I get back to Chicago, I see the same thing. A guy in a suit running down the street, and I'm like, this guy really cares about his cocaine dealer's time. This is a, a really, you know, it's a good clientele. You know, in college, I did, went to school to study pharmaceuticals. I ended up changing my major to business management. I was in the business of managing my roommate's cocaine business. It was uh, a lot of fun. We weren't drug dealers per se. We were more like narcotics nonprofits. You know what I mean? As long as you break even, nothing happens. No, I do like being in Chicago a lot. Chicago is a very uh, interesting city. And I feel like it's kind of taught me a lot about how to be a better person when it comes to, you know, economics, race. Like, Chicago's actually made it so that I know exactly how to be a better racist. This city's taught me a lot. I know exactly what group we're all allowed to be racist towards. 19-year-olds. They're not here right now. Fuck them, who cares? They can't hear you. Oh, you're the treasurer of your fraternity? Shut the fuck up, nobody cares, man. Get chlamydia and get a life. I don't know, I feel like you live through five Lollapaloozas. You're like, die, I want you all to die. Don't worry, guys, I can say that. I was 19 once, you know, it doesn't matter. No, I like Chicago a lot. Chicago is cool. I, I do feel bad though, because there are the misconceptions you hear about everywhere else, you know, the bad stuff. Like my friends still ask me all the same stupid questions all the time. They're like, oh my God, Chicago, the murders? Have you ever seen a murder? I'm like, see a murder? I am a murder now, yeah. That's my parking spot and you will die for it. <laughs> but there's one thing I can't lie to them about. There's a real serious problem in the city. It's the gang problem. The serious, serious gang problem in the city. My car was actually stolen by the worst gang in the city, the government. Yeah, I got towed. I was having a good Friday night and then Lori Lightfoot showed me how big her dick was. I was like, damn, nigga, relax, chill. She's not a colleague, that's a nigga, bro. I don't give a fuck all that. Lori, 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 what a goofball Lori. Goofy ass Lori. I mean, I, I can't even really make too much fun of her because like, if you put us both on paper, we're like the same nigga for real. <laughs> I like to drink Modelo's and eat pussy too, so I can't even really shame her. Don't worry, guys, I can make fun of her. I look like her, I know, it's okay. Yeah, I check. Yeah, I was Lori Lightfoot for Halloween last year, and uh, when you're on mushrooms, dressed like Lori Lightfoot in Chicago, shit gets weird. It's a different Friday night. I complain about Lori a lot, and I feel bad, because like, I talk to my dad all the time, and my dad's like, hey man, you can't complain too much. Don't forget, I lived in D.C. in the 80s and 90s. At least your mayor's not smoking crack. I'm like, honestly, man, I'd rather she smoke crack than make TikToks, because the city is on fire. We need help.
It's been fun. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I'm going to tell you some, uh, some stupid dick jokes. Is that okay? Okay, some dick jokes? Yeah. Next! I know what you... <laughs> I feel like I'm in seventh grade again. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know, man. Dicks are interesting. Dicks are interesting. The dick is the only part of your body that'll grow exponentially based on how it feels. A dick in Wisconsin in January and June, those are two different dicks, okay? That's a seasonal dick. I don't know, but sometimes I feel like I wish my body would grow the same way my dick does. Like, imagine that knock-knock joke pops off and I just grow to six foot three. <laughs> and I feel good for a second. A joke bombs, I go down to five foot one and go kill myself. I'm like... I was doing that joke one time, this lady was like, how big is it? I was like, open your mouth, let's measure it together. And uh, her husband didn't like that. No. <laughs> No, I mean, it, when it comes to dating, I feel like penis is very important. When it comes to flirting, there's all these like sexual things you gotta do and say. I don't know, I just don't like doing it. I'm a comedian, I gotta say what's in my mind. So when I meet a nice lady, I say, hey, my name is Adam, I have an Ethiopian face, an American voice, and a Chinese penis. <laughs> you guys are terrible, okay? It's not Chinese in size. It's got a Chinese work ethic, okay? It is here to dominate. If Fox News could fear monger over it, they would. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out. You guys have been great. My name is Adam Adis. Thank you. Bye.